Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, it's great to see so many of you here this late afternoon. And I'm really happy to be able to tell you an update on, on Savo Solar. And uh, I apologize that I was looking at the list that this is the only English presentation for the day in this is hall, but still I hope that you can get the, the point. I have been here quite a few times already in these meetings, even in this room, and I thought that I would focus now today in the things that happened between my last visit here in June and, and, and today. Still, for those who have not maybe seen this and, and, and know us, uh, I want to give you a quick up de uh, 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 description of what we do. So we make large-scale solar thermal systems, for district heating, cooling, industrial process heating. We have the most efficient solar thermal collectors in the world, and we have strong references nowadays mainly in Denmark, but also elsewhere. And we have been able to build a very strong brand all over the world. And we work with local partners to be able to offer them the best possible solution and also the turnkey delivery capability. And instead of, of showing the mission and vision and something more of our company, I decided to share some pieces of news from past few months with you. This is the first one. I think many of you have seen at least the articles that IPCC uh, gave this uh, global warming report, and this is just showing what are the possible consequences of the increase of the average temperature of the uh, Earth. We are now in one degree, and now the question is where we can stop it, how we can stop it. This we all know. We have seen a lot of pictures of this and movies, well, television, terrible fires in California. This was also published a month ago. This is a shocking news, at least it was to me. How, what can we do? How we can stop this? So, animals are going away. We are part of the animals. This was published Friday, Black Friday in USA. So the US government entities were making this. So it's a frightening news. I, I read a bit about that, and it's actually a very strong message also to everybody else, not only US people, what can happen with the climate change. And this is also, this autumn was published that we are not, we have not been able to do anything yet actually to reduce the greenhouse gases. And this is actually how it looks like when you have coal burning plant with a very low level of technology. And there are hundreds or thousands of them in the world, unfortunately. Terrifying picture in a way. But there are also good news, and I just chose one of them. So Ireland decided to be the first country in the world to divest from fossil fuels. 300 million euros they will take away from fossil fuel investments and invest in renewables. And this is our part and our mission to help to do that, to invest in clean and economical heating all over the world with our most advanced technology. Shortly, some words about year 2018 onwards. Uh, this this far, so the second half of the year has been good compared to the first half, so our order intake is more than 6 million euros, and our factory is working full time, and we have been able to, because of the load, also improve our efficiency and, and learn things how we do better. We have a huge amount of workload in our system design quotation, and, and that department, we are not able to even handle everything, so we have to prioritize and it's from different countries. Our uh, offer base from the pipeline is almost 60 million euros, which is higher, highest ever. Unfortunately, as earlier, the projects are taking long time to realize, especially when you go countries who ha where not has been done earlier, these type of systems. But it looks very positive in that sense. After June, we also have, uh, had, have, we have new board members, and uh, after a few months, they all have background in energy, 
also in heating, very seasoned, knowledgeable, competent businessmen. We really have now a very strong board, which is, they are very easy to work with, not always nice, as they shouldn't be, but still very competent and, and easy to work with. We have some changes in our management team. Uh, we have a new CFO started beginning of this month. And we are, we're happy to, really happy to get it Raul so fast. He has a long experience in the different aspects of our financial management and uh, has been living 13 years in China. And actually, he's now also with some Chinese group in, in our factory taking care of that. And Orben, who worked for us two years and then was, we landed him for one year. Uh, to another company, now he returned back, and, and, and both his technical skills and understanding of solar thermal systems and, and his capability of communicating with customers, they are excellent and, and really, really adding value to the company and also to our customers. So, a few words about what we have been doing. So, this is the French project Conda. This is a picture has been taken two weeks ago. So we basically, we have installed everything now. We are just building up the first pipe, last, last pipelines and, and the uh, control system over there. We hope that everything will be ready by end of this year. And we are working, everybody's working for that. And this is the first one ever in the world built that the large scale solar thermal system is on tracker, one axis tracker following the sun. And on the left side, you can see the paper mill that the heat is going from the solar thermal system. So after this is an operation, we believe that there will be a lot of interest to get similar type of things when, we, when everybody sees how much more the tracker will provide energy, if it will. We believe it will, and the customer, customer and the paper mill are believing that. And now, the other one we have been building up, this is Creno, and if Somebody wants to look at this is Google Maps. So Creno is a bit east from Aarhus, city of Aarhus. And uh, as you see, this is not our field. It's competitor's field. There has been already several years a competitor's field. So that was last year. And next year it looks like this. So just beside our competitor's field, there will be our system with 22,000 square meters. And this will be the first time ever in the world that our collectors and our main competitors' collectors are in the same place, same solar radiation, same system, delivering uh, heat to the same distant heating system, and we are extremely happy that this will happen, to verify that we, how much better we actually can be. And this is where we are. We have installed half of our collectors there, and uh, so you see them there, and then the half of the field is ready for that. We have also built quite a lot of already the other constructions and piping and everything. So uh, invoiced half of the invoices and rest of these things will be installed uh, December, January. And the system will be handed over in, in end of February. So it, everything has been going according to the time schedule which this size of turnkey delivery is also showing that we have learned during the years a lot. It's not very simple. And this is just to remind you what, I what are the cornerstones of our market concept or way to operate in our sales. So they are, we, we want to have the, the best product. We are partnering with local partners or partnering locally and then we want to always make the best possible solution for the customer, aiming for that the customer always wins and also the local community prospers because the local people are able to work together with us when building up these uh, clean energy systems. Few words about the markets. What has happened and what is happening in, in different areas where we are working and, and I took the China first because this is we we just let out the, the send out the release concerning the memorandum of understanding with the China Southern Power Grid. So um, we believe, 
and many others are believing that China will be very important market for large-scale solar thermal systems. And of course, it is also a big potential market for, let's say, resources, materials, and, and other. Even, even money can be a resource from China. Uh, that's why we have been working in uh, different fronts in there. So many fronts instead of focusing on one, and this is just trying to illustrate what we have been done in last year, how many different things we are ongoing over there. And this memorandum of understanding is only one of those. Very interesting though, and, and, and we will see. Uh, and, and China's Southern Power Grid, as we said in the release, is... Uh, uh, well, they are in Fortune Global 500 uh, ranked as 110th last year. And they are making this investment. So they are not our partner, but they are a customer who wants to make a system together with us and some other companies. And there are also other things uh, ongoing. As I said, that there's a group of people from China to visit our factory just today. As we have informed, we have uh, partners in Latin America and Australia. And now we also have a bit more ac activities in Africa, not on the same level, but still. And, and there's a lot of things happening also there. And the, the main motivation for these countries and these regions for making solar thermal, in addition to redu reducing the emissions, is the high cost of the current cost of the e energy. You can see the, the Australia double the gas price in two years. Peru, more than 100 US dollars per megawatt hour. In Africa, it can be even higher. The main customers in these countries, obviously, they are not listed heating companies or heating at all in, a, in a buildings, but it is uh, industrial companies who want, need to have heating in their processes. And which is, which is very important for us and interesting is that there already are companies who are willing to do the investments, telling that uh, the potential is also there in, in from their point of view. In Europe, Danish market will slow down next year. There will be new projects after that, but there will be bigger ones, even bigger ones, but there will be a slowdown, which is not bad for us. And, and Finally, I would say that in Germany, the activities or let's say government actions, supporting actions towards the innovative and clean heating are finally bringing up a concrete results as projects where you have larger scale solar thermal systems also coming up. And, and actually the government is subsidizing and supporting the idea very much. As is our, my, well, as is a couple of other countries. Switzerland is one. And I just wanted to take Switzerland here. There's a Swiss, Swiss Institute has made a study. Uh, as an example, that they did a theoretical calculation that what is the potential if you take four industry sectors, food, textile, paper, chemistry, only in Switzerland, who need below 100 degrees heat. And if you would do all the heating with solar thermal. And that is the potential is huge, 8 million square meters. In Denmark, there are 1.5 million square meters now installed. So, of course, you don't get everything out of there, but this is just showing that only Switzerland for process heating under 100 degrees, the potential is this big, and it is elsewhere even bigger. And the last example of our market development and situation is France. And, and in France, there are also government is heavily supporting towards clean, emission-free heating, by district heating, utilizing different renewable energy sources, and they have a very strong emphasis on, on solar thermal. Uh, we have been able to build up a very good connections to the authorities, institutes, local project developers, investors, over there, we are almost considered to be a French company over there. 
And uh, we have several projects in design of furry face, and we believe that this market will be growing at least next three years. And uh, when you get this uh, presentation from video or, or, or internet from organizers, then if you want, please look the video from YouTube. That is, if you want to know more what French government is planning to do for clean heating and, and solar thermal there. It's not only solar thermal, but there's also at the nine minutes, there's a nice footage of, of our system in, in Vorepe also. And it has uh, mostly English text, so you don't have to know all things in, in French. But this is something that we see now a, a biggest potential in, in Europe, and there are many projects coming up. And this is something that you have seen earlier. So this is yelling. The, still the most efficient solar thermal collector field, large-scale solar thermal collector field in, in Denmark. And uh, next May, there will be 5,000 square meters more, almost 5,000 square meters more. So the installation will happen February, March, as planned now. Uh, and still, Renault will be bigger than this. But, but this has been really really successful, customer is very happy on the system, and which is, of course, uh, uh, telling that they are buying more. So, this was actually all I was planning to tell you today. So, I think I'm happy to now answer all the questions you may, may have towards me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. So we can take some questions now. Uh, you're welcome over here if you want, so we can. And uh, you can All post right. a question in uh, English, or if you want in Swedish, and I can translate. So, um, My first question really was, uh, can you describe a bit of the, your business model in more detail? How, how do you get paid, for example, this, in this um, plant you have? in gelling, for example, how, 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 how do you get um, revenue in, from, from your So it is, a, it, is a, it is a turnkey delivery, so we deliver the system, and after we have delivered, uh, the customer starts to operate. So basically we have a, a milestones, uh, starting from the signing the contract, we get some money, and then after milestones we get the money. Uh, in France, with the Condar project that we were showing that we will have an agreement with our customer New Heat that we will operate the, the plant for them for five years. It's not big money, but still it's something that we can secure that the system is working well and, and giving the, all the benefit to the customer, uh, meaning the, our customer New Heat and their customer the, the paper mill. Okay, and um, how much money do you make now a, a year approximately how much is the revenue or uh well uh last year i don't say because it was so bad the whole industry mm. was suffering last year uh, and we have not published this year forecast for the revenue only said that it will be higher than next year and it will be uh, but of course as we have published that we have received more than six million euros orders this year and uh, not everything will be delivered or recognized as revenue this year, but quite a big part. That I okay. can say. Okay. And, and how is the financial situation right now for the company? How do you have money in the bank now or how is it? Well, we have money in the bank. We are able to pay our bills and uh, been operating so far. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's the answer to the question. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> was, because I was thinking a bit about the share price have been developing, well, not as you have expected in the recent years. No. Uh, yeah. uh, what would you say are the main reasons for that decline and how have you addressed those reasons? And uh, So I think, of course, that we have not been able to publish any big orders after summer. That is obvious. Well, but it's also something that, as, as can be seen, that when we publish something positive, somebody is always selling. So it's, uh, it, it's partly, of course, we are the 
uh, we should be able to show all the time growth and, and, and everything better than and we have been able, thanks to customers also uh, taking time to make the final decisions. Uh, and it's also partly due to the stock exchange, uh, how it goes, how the people are dealing. And, and of course, we are having a mainly, uh, 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 I would say, private investors here. So we don't have any big investors or owners here. So that is not stabilizing then the, the situation in that sense. So though I, I think there are several reasons for that. And, and of course, it has not been developing favorably on that. And yeah. And, and why was last year such a bad year for the solar thermal industry, or was it a regulation? It, well, it, it was regulation, but it was also, so there are uh, two reasons. One reason was the Danish market went down fully, and other markets did not start yet. So at the same time, uh, they were not actually, we, we know exactly the, the project that happened in 2017. There are five, six of them. We did one and, and others did something. And, and if you look at our competitors' uh, situation, they, we all suffered a lot okay. last year. Okay, we can take some questions from the audience. Do we have? Yes? Is it possible to get even higher performance of your solar cells? Uh, I guess I can repeat the question for the. Is it possible to get a higher performance from your solar um, cells? Yes, it's always possible. We know also what to do. Uh, and then it's about uh, how much it's costing. Are we getting the better energy price to the customer or not? So then we have to make a compromise on that. But, but basically there are two things, uh, main things. There are several other things, but two main things. First thing is how well the collector is uh, absorbing the solar radiation into heat. And for that, we have maybe, well, we have definitely the world best technological solution for that. And we know that it can be improved. Cost is a question mark. And the second thing is that when the heat temperature is going higher, then you need insulation, that you don't get heat losses. And there, I think everybody can do better. Uh, and again, the question is cost how you do that. But those two things we are considering all the times and, and seeing that if we can increase the efficiency more than the cost will be, or even re decrease the cost at the same time, then we definitely will do it. Will it be 10% more or, or uh, let's say 30% more? Will it be 10 or 30% more or can you give a figure? <coughs> so as in all energy business, even if you get 1% more energy in a, in a big system, everybody is running for that. So we think 1% at a time. And, and so there's no way you can get 30% uh, more with the, uh, on the level where we are very easily. No, uh, I can repeat, are customers uh, waiting for better performance? Is that why they're holding back on their... It's a very good question, but that, the answer is no, they are not waiting for better performance. They are just doing their own calculations, and then they are uh, taking the time to make their own processes. And, and uh, for example, in France, the process is such that, that you first have to make the first system design, then you go to... Uh, ADEME, which is the uh, energy administration in the government, you present the project there, and if they approve it, then you go you know, ahead, then you go for uh, local building permit, you make env environment studies and everything, and these all take time, especially in countries like, un unfortunately, so far still France, example, that they have never done these big ones before, except now ours, and so it will take time. There are also other examples. We have had a, a system somewhere in European country that an uh, entrepreneur having a process where they need heat, and we have uh, made a couple of designs, and they are very happy about the energy price. And then his brother said that, no, I want to do different things. So 10 months after, we already thought that we have an agreement that this will be developed further, uh, he informed now, now I have bought my father, brother out, but it took 10 months 
before he, he was able to do. So just two examples, what type of things are hindering them to make the fast decisions over there. They are big things for those guys, especially the entrepreneurs, whether they are greenhouse owners or, or paper mills or anything. It's, it's big things for them also. Uh, this facility in Greno in Denmark, when will that be finished and uh, by when will you have been running it for so long time so you can compare it with your main competitor? Uh, it will be up and running uh, next spring and uh, hopefully already June we know, but definitely after the summer. Okay. Let's see if we have any more questions here from the audience. No. Um, uh, I was wondering a bit uh, how, how with the with the cash you have right now, how long do you think you can um, manage, or would, uh, do you see um, a need for taking more money? Or so we have now the warrants ongoing, the options after the uh, we had tuned in the the rights issue, and now today is the first day for the the warrants. Uh, we announced uh, the strike price, uh, uh, share price on Friday, and, and, and of course that is uh, challenging at this moment. Uh, and of course, we have calculated that we get some money from there, so it's calculated in our cash flow still. Uh, we'll see what happens on that, uh, and uh, then we are then finding ways to handle things otherwise. Uh, the biggest challenge, of course, is always that, that uh, in a Greno, for example, 3.5 million euros project for us. It's huge. So we buy materials, we do the things, then we install things, and then we get the money. So our cash goes like this, and then it comes up. So, and, and that's why, for example, this warrant is, is quite important for us that we can handle that, that it will be the project cash flow will not affect to the temporary situation in the company. Just like in every, every project uh, company in the world, that is, that is how it goes. And for a small company, we are not able to negotiate with the big customers also the stable cash flow, so let's say positive cash flow in the project yet. Okay. And compared to traditional district heating, uh, I mean, you, you can only deliver heat when the sun shines. Uh, how, how do you store energy in the meantime or what's your solution on that just to clarify? So the general solution is of course water storages. They can be a short term water storages which can be seen they are on top of the ground water tanks and, and usually they are for one two days or ten days or something like that summertime two weeks uh, and at least overnight and uh, then it can be a seasonal storage when you make a big hole in the crown and you make a lake and then you store the heat over there. So there are several examples in the world for both of those uh, good and bad ones, but that's anyhow the, the lowest cost energy storage and the easiest way to store energy in the world nowadays still is water storage. So, And if everything would go according to plan, uh, how do you see the company in three years? Um, where have you reach then? What's your position? So we are present at least in, in three continents, maybe four, meaning that we have systems uh, running in, in, in all of those. And uh, we are, I would say, this is not an official oh. forecast then, but I would say that we would be at least five, six times bigger in, in revenue point of view than we are now. Maybe even more. Maybe we have a, a partner who has a license manufacturing agreement somewhere in the world to do our products and then we work together. Uh, that, that is one thing that, that we would like to do to sell our technology to somebody. For example, in China. Okay. And unfortunately, we are out of time here. And I want to thank you very much for a very thank interesting you. presentation. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, you will be available yes, on, in I'll, the I'll company corner here if yes. you have more questions there.